To view the contents of this video, along with their timestamps and other information, please check out the description below. Hi, I'm Eduardo Montalvo with Coro Engineering. And in this video, we will be talking about how to easily and effectively replace a Hall effect sensor with a Red Rock TMR sensor. Red Rock TMR sensors are a great alternative to Hall effect sensors. Their current consumption can be under 100 nanoamps, which would be a negligible power drain in battery powered applications. They can also be more sensitive than Hall effect sensors, which allows the use of a more cost effective magnet solution. And many Hall effect and TMR sensors in the market today are available in an industry standard SOT23 package with both sensor types having the pinout shown below. This allows for a quick drop in replacement. Lastly, it's important to note that Kodo's Red Rock TMR sensors are readily available, either in stock or with very short lead times. We have found this to be especially helpful to design engineers who are struggling to source Hall effect sensors due to the ongoing supply chain shortages. When replacing a Hall effect sensor with a TMR sensor, there is one major difference between these technologies that users need to pay attention to the axis of sensitivity. This refers to the direction that the magnetic field needs to have inside the sensor to activate it. Assuming an SOT23 package oriented with a coordinate frame as shown here, Hall effect sensors respond to a magnetic field that's aligned with the Z axis, whereas TMR sensors respond to a field aligned with the X axis. Furthermore, each technology has a preferred orientation of the magnet that is used to activate it, which consists of pointing the magnet's polarization axis along the axis of sensitivity, as shown here. Often, we encounter Hall effect sensors used with their preferred orientation, and even though their applications would greatly benefit by switching to TMR, design engineers are sometimes reluctant to replace Hall effect sensors because they believe they will need to completely redesign their application to accommodate the TMR axis of sensitivity. However, as we will see in this video, that's not necessarily the case. For any given orientation of a magnetic sensor and a magnet, there's two requirements that need to be met for the sensor to respond to the magnet. First, the component of magnetic field that passes through the sensor sensing element needs to align with its axis of sensitivity. Second, the magnitude of this aligned component, let's call it Bx, must be strong enough for the sensor to respond to it. For example, in the case of a digital TMR sensor, Bx must exceed the magnetic operate threshold, which is commonly referred to as BOP. For a TMR sensor, these two conditions can be met with a multitude of orientations of the magnet with respect to the sensor, like the examples shown here. Let's take a closer look at option number three. If a magnet is positioned directly above a TMR sensor, like in a typical Hall effect sensor application, with both parts centered with respect to each other, then the field passing through the sensing element will be parallel to the z-axis and the sensor will not respond to it. But with the small offset of the sensor and or the magnet along the x-axis, the TMR sensor will see field lines with a component that aligns with its sensitive axis. One other thing to note here is that this BX component is not as strong as the component along the Z-axis in this position. However, a higher sensitivity TMR sensor, which can pick up weaker fields, can compensate for that and give more flexibility to the positioning of the sensor and the magnet. Let's do a couple of demonstrations to illustrate how this comes into play when replacing a Hall effect sensor with a TMR sensor. Here we have a small evaluation board with a Hall effect sensor that activates with 40 gauss on one side and a Red Rock TMR sensor that activates with 9 gauss on the other side. Both parts 
are in an SOT23 package and have an omnipolar response, meaning that they respond equally to either a north or a south pole magnetic field. Here I have a cylindrical magnet that is polarized along this axis, with a north pole here and a south pole over here. Over here on the board, we have an LED that indicates when the TMR sensor is activated, and another that it indicates when the Hall effect sensor is activated. First, let's consider a scenario where the magnet is positioned above the two sensors, aligned with the z-axis, and it moves along that same axis. If I bring the magnet towards the two sensors, while aligned with the center of the packages, only the LED corresponding to the Hall effect sensor turns on. If I then apply a small offset of the magnet along the x-axis, the second LED also turns on, indicating that the TMR sensor is detecting the magnet. And since the TMR sensor used here is omnipolar, the applied offset can be in either direction along the x-axis. Similarly, if the magnet has the same orientation but moves along the y-axis instead of the z-axis, the TMR sensor won't be able to detect the magnet if it is aligned with the center of the package. But, just like in the previous example, a small offset along the x-axis will work to make the TMR sensor activate. Now let's look at what happens if the magnet moves along the x-axis. As I pass the magnet above the two sensors, note how both sensors are activated, but the TMR sensor in particular turns on, then off, and then on again. This is due to what was observed before. The TMR sensor turns on when the magnet is slightly offset from its center, and turns off when the magnet is directly above it and centered with respect to the package. Going back to our magnetic field line diagram, we can see how the BX component has opposing directions on either side of the magnet's center axis. This corresponds to different polarities, both of which will activate an omnipolar TMR sensor. And if an application, for example, requires a single sensor activation each time the magnet passes by, one potential solution to this is to use a unipolar TMR sensor instead of an omnipolar TMR sensor. A unipolar TMR sensor would only activate with a single polarity of field along the x-axis. This table shows the responses from a Hall effect sensor, an omnipolar TMR, and a unipolar TMR sensor to a magnet that is aligned with the z-axis and moves along the x-axis. Note how the Hall effect sensor is on at step number 3, whereas an omnipolar TMR sensor would be on at steps number 2 and 4. And if a unipolar TMR sensor was used, it would only be on in step number 2. To summarize, Red Rock TMR sensors can bring significant benefits to an application, such as lower magnet costs and or a longer battery life. In addition, many Hall effect sensor part numbers are currently unavailable or have long lead times, whereas Kodo's Red Rock TMR sensors are readily available. And despite the differences in axis of sensitivity, a Red Rock TMR sensor can replace a Hall effect sensor with minimal changes, such as applying a small offset to the magnet or selecting a sensor with an output response that will match the application requirements. As always, Kodo is here to help. To learn more about how to replace a Hall effect sensor with a Red Rock TMR sensor in your application, please contact us directly at the email address shown below, or visit our website at coderelay.com. Thank you.